Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to another report we're going to be doing today. It has been a few weeks since my last report, and as you know now, I am posting less frequently because I want to give you very important, accurate information and very information-dense videos, not just you know reporting the same thing every single day. And there's been a lot happen over the past few weeks that I really want to talk about today. And things, unfortunately, are escalating and escalating for the worse. We are seeing inflation surging higher. Like I warned about, the central banks declared victory on inflation, and now they're having to eat their words. We're seeing these jobs reports come out to say that the job market is absolutely booming. But what they're not telling you is, is a lot of the jobs that are going are the good jobs, the full-time jobs. And even if you're just working one hour a week, your class is employed. So no, the jobs market is not improving. We're also getting more information out about the banks. And the Federal Reserve said themselves there is going to be more bank failures, especially with commercial real estate, which we've been warning about uh, for about a year now on the channel. Um, and the reason for that is they want more of the small banks to go down. So there's only a few mega banks that the, that the Federal Reserve controls themselves. These mega banks actually own the Federal Reserve. If you do a little bit of uh, research and read up on that, that's a topic for another video. Um, because they want more centralized control. And we've got warnings from the uh, one and only Jamie Dimon. He's very worried about the economy. He's worried about uh, the resilience of the markets. So we've got a lot to cover today, everyone. It's going to be an action-packed action episode. So you know what time it is. Let's get straight into the news, the facts, and the data. So... <clears throat> One thing that is going away, first a quick story before we get into the, the main topics. 99 cents only stores goes bankrupt as inflation keeps biting. So this is just a little uh, antidote here uh, to say that inflation is still high, unlike the central bankers are saying. Now, something else that has started to happen recently is oil is surging again. It is heading towards $100. Uh, oil was dropping a bit, um, about three to six months ago, and that's why headline CPI was falling. But now oil is surging with all the geopolitical tensions with the Russia-Ukraine war, but now more what's going on with Israel and Iran, the tensions rising there uh, with the Houthi rebels attacking a lot of oil tankers uh, in the Red Sea. And there is still a lot of black swan events that could trigger oil surging. And again, why you have to pay attention to what happens with oil is because it makes everything else more expensive. And if you're an investor, you're selling that follows the stock market, only wants to know about what's happening in the stock market, well, you need to pay attention to what happens with commodities. So first things first, inflation shocks are coming. Now, we've got a new report here from S&P Global. They've now downgraded another five US banks. And remember, it's not just doom and gloom. The Federal Reserve themselves, uh, Jerome Powell, you can look up uh, that uh, testimony in Congress. He says there is going to be more bank failures. They want this to happen, everyone. Um, lenders have uh, billions of dollars in loans that may face material uh, deterioration. So what banks are those? In a new uh, Outlook report, S&P says it's downgrading First Commonwealth Financial Corp., M&T uh, Bank Corp, uh, Cinevis Financial Corp, Trustmark Corp, and Valley National Bank Corp. So I hope you're not banking with them, but if you are, you may want to find another bank and they're all downgraded to negative from stable. So these banks and many more other banks are not stable. And uh, I've got a screenshot here to show you that if you just think it's the small banks that are in trouble, look what happened uh, right before 2008. This was uh, the debt uh, leverage ratios of Wall Street banks. We can see Lehman Brothers, they were leveraged 30 to 1. Uh, Bear Steens, nearly 35. Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, uh, they, they were still leveraged around uh, 20 to 1 and got even high up to about 25 to 1. And this is still the case for many of the large banks. They are still highly leveraged. They simply take your deposits out and they gamble it and they hope that if things go wrong, the Federal Reserve will come and bail them out. 
which they probably will, but it will have a dire consequences. Now, what you're all wanting to know, well, okay, what exactly is Jamie Dimon, uh, Goldman Sachs so worried about? Well, first things, let's talk about interest rates. So Jamie Dimon warns US might face interest rate spike. Now, why this is so important is because the markets have been hopeful that there's going to be multiple interest rate cuts by mid this year. This is why the stock market was surging, but unfortunately, it looks like that's not going to happen now. Or should I say, it shouldn't happen, but maybe the Federal Reserve might do the unthinkable and they may be forced to lower interest rates later this year, not because of inflation, but because of the high debt burden of the United States. The United States is adding $1 trillion worth of debt every 100 days. This is only going to escalate. Their interest uh, payments on their debt is over $1.5 trillion per year. So we may face a situation called stagflation where there's high inflation, high interest rates, and low economic growth. So let's keep reading here, everyone, on some other warnings he's got. So he added that longer term costs associated with the green economy transition, supply chain restructuring, and rising military spending may lead to stickier inflation and higher rates than markets expect. Now, this is a key word here, than markets expect. It's always an unexpected event that causes markets to crash. If markets expect interest rates to go up, you know, 25 basis points. There won't be much volatility in the markets. It's when unexpected things happen, the markets freak out and they try to reprice. Now let's look at this uh, next warning here. We've all heard this narrative, the soft landing. Well, he doesn't think a soft landing is coming. He says, plus the ongoing wars in Ukraine and the Middle East continue to have potential to disrupt energy and food markets, migration and military and economic relationships in addition to their dreadful human cost, he said. He said the significant and somewhat unprecedented forces cause us to remain cautious. So he is very, very worried. And uh, I think we shouldn't just be worried about what's happening overseas. We should be worrying about what's actually happening in the United States. It's coming up to election. There's going to be a lot of contention. We see the lawlessness. We see the migrants, the illegal immigrants, should I say, flooding across the border because they don't know if you know this could be Biden's uh, last uh, time being president. So they're all flooding in right now. They're stampeding the National Guard. They're flooding in, and this is an invasion, people. I can't put it any other way. It is a full-on invasion. And uh, maybe it's just some you know more votes that, that they're hoping is going to be coming in. But this will have consequences for the country, the economy, and ultimately the markets. Diamond also highlighted that U.S. stocks remain at higher end of historical valuations, while corporate borrowing costs remain relatively inexpensive given the high level of interest rates. So that's right as well. Uh, the stock market is so overvalued that any kind of economic shocks, or we can see here, corporate borrowing costs, if interest rates go up, that means companies' profitability is going to go down and it doesn't make sense at these valuations why they should be so high. So let's go into his next warning. With that in mind, and the broader economy performing well, Diamond uh, says the market seem to be pricing in a 70 to 80% chance of a soft landing. But he thinks the chances of that outcome are a lot lower. And, uh, you know, I don't just uh, always agree with everything Jamie Diamond says here, but I think he is right here. The die may cast small changes in interest rates today may have less impact on inflation in the future than many people believe. Well, we can see that already. They've lifted interest rates to levels people thought that the Federal Reserve would never go to. During 2021, 2022, they thought they'll lift them to 1%, and they said if it went to 4%, you know, the whole economy would implode and that uh, inflation would turn to deflation. But no, inflation is still very sticky, okay? Also, just type one, I uh, forgot to do this mic check at the start, if my mic is working well. Um, also, he says, we are prepared for a very broad range of interest rates from 2% to 8%. So thank you, everyone. That's right, to 8%. Imagine what would happen to companies' profitability at 8%, to mortgage rates, the housing market. Yes, people have fixed rates currently, but for people wanting to buy a home in the future, having to pay 
much higher. If you know the Fed's at eight percent, maybe they'll be paying ten to twelve percent. Um, your home is only worth with what people are willing to pay, and people won't be able to pay much. Now, this is what I was talking about before. This will all lead to stagflation. So economically, the worst case scenario would be stagflation, which would not only come with high interest rates, but also with high credit losses, lower business volumes, and more difficult markets. And I think this is the most likely scenario because I think the Federal Reserve is not going to do what they need to do. They need to keep lifting interest rates right now. They need to go up at least another 1%, but they're not going to do that because the US government is bankrupt. Um, and this is also going to lead to much more business defaults. Now, what this has led to uh, in the markets as well is a sudden rush to safe haven asset. And that is gold. You know, I've been telling people you want a bit of gold, you want a bit of Bitcoin in your portfolio to protect against the dollar losing its purchasing power, to protect against economic turmoil, geopolitical turmoil. I think it's, you know, the perfect duo. It's up to you how you want to invest. But let's have a look here. Gold has gone to $2,360 an ounce. Why are people rushing to gold? And guess what, people? They're not buying ETFs. There's actually ETF outflows. They're rushing to buy physical gold. And who is buying the gold? Also, we can see Bitcoin rebounded uh, a bit today as well, uh, getting close to another all-time high. So this has led to a great report, and I'm going to go into why. And guess who is buying? You need to know this because I think something big is going to come. So the gold market hunts for answers behind bullion sudden surge. Because yes, a lot of people, not me, I've been expecting gold you know, to go up for a while now. A lot of people are wondering, why is gold going up? Well, I think it's because a lot of central banks know something big is about to happen. So look at this. See, uh, seasoned executives and analysts offer very different reasons to who or what has driven gold to its unprecedented heights. It is, a is it a central bank worried about the dollar's role as an economic weapon? Could be. Funds betting that the Federal Reserve pivot to lower interest rates is imminent? Well, latest inflation report says they shouldn't, but they still might. An army of algorithmic traders drawn to gold simply because it's going up? Could be. Stubborn inflation and worries about a hard landing. I think uh, Jamie Dimon just said that. Weaker currencies, well, you know, the, the dollar is losing purchasing power, but it's performing better than other currencies. But for example, like the Aussie dollar, um, the Turkish lira, you know, other currencies, gold is booming uh, because their currencies are so weak. Upcoming elections or all the above? I think it's all the above. But let's dig a bit deeper. So who's buying? Well, like I said, people, central banks. Central banks are buying big. And is that because they know that fiat's about to die? Maybe they're going to use it to tempt people to buy their central bank uh, digital currencies. Who knows? In particular, as well as, as big institutions and traders preparing for a shift to looser rates. Chinese consumers are worried about uh, wilting returns in other assets and depreciation uh, on currency. Uh, Reddit platform self-proclaimed stakers boast uh, of hoarding bars and coins. That's another thing people are doing. Let's get into this. Look at this chart. ETF outflows. People are dumping ETFs. They want the real physical gold. Why do they want the real physical gold? Do they think there could be something in the financial system about to blow up? Do they think some of these huge financial institutions that are holding the money for these ETFs are about to blow up? Do they think there could be, you know, some kind of EMP attack and the, the system hall will go down and everyone's going to need their physical gold? Well, maybe. Uh, also, the geopolitical uh, turmoil that's rising. People are going to want physical. Because look at this. The volume of gold held in largest ETFs have been falling for two years, but the price is surging. That tells me central banks are buying bars in the truckload. So where are they buying? Uh, in the larger futures and over-the-counter markets, trading activity is rising sharply, signaling that usual institution buyers, central banks, investment banks, pension funds, sovereign wealth funds are involved. So this is big money, people. Big money knows something's about to go down and gold is the safest asset on the planet 
when people think something really bad's about to happen, they put all their money in gold, okay? Options activity is picking up too, and there are expectations bullion prices may vault higher still as option dealers rush to cover their exposure. So one possibility is that some gold investors are instead zeroing in on the prospect of a hard landing in the US economy. And uh, I think that's definitely, definitely true and rushing to buy a bullion as its role as a haven. Now also, the inversion of the spread may signal that nervous investors are clamoring to hold, uh, get a hold of spot gold now as protections against potential turmoil. So not only turmoil in the markets, but actual physical geopolitical turmoil. The rally is defying a lot of normal thinking. Well, I think we all know here that you know gold should be a lot higher than it is now, but it's very manipulated. Uh, I think the narrative is changing towards sticky inflation and perhaps a hard landing spiced with a lot of geopolitical uncertainty and deglobalization driving central bank demand. So that's exactly right, everyone. Inflation is higher. Central banks, I think, need to lift interest rates, but they won't or they may only do one. And we're going to see stagflation. We're going to see a hard landing. We're going to see more bank failures and we're going to see more geopolitical turmoil. And what the central bank is, what the big banks are doing right now, they're rushing out and buying gold by the truckload. I think if you know you want to be def defensive, not financial advice, but I'm doing, I'm buying gold as well. I have been doing that for the past two years. I've also got a bit of Bitcoin in my portfolio, not 50%, not 75%, you know, 10% of your portfolio because it is much more risky as a hedge against the dollar losing purchasing power, whatever currency you are. If you're in another country, your currency is losing even more purchasing power than the dollar. So what do you guys think about this? Let me know down below. It's been awesome talking with you again. I'll keep you updated with all the latest economic, geopolitical and market news. I'll see you all in the next video.